back, relax, and maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about them. Hey guys, so I am here today to review two books for you, one of which, or maybe both, are fantasies, science fiction, kind of a bit of blend of both maybe? Definitely one of them seems like a blend of both and that is this one, Grass, which is by Sherry S. Tepper. I picked this book up because I read um, a Sherry S. Tepper book quite a while ago and wanted to get back to her work. And the other book that I picked up recently is called The Immortal Prince and this is by Jennifer Fallon. This one was recommended to me on Twitter a while ago and I finally got round to listening to the audiobook which I thoroughly recommend and I definitely can't wait to tell you about these two because I really enjoyed both of them. So let's start off by talking about Grass. I find Sherry S. Tepper's work to be quite slow moving and this is a chunky book, it's about 550 pages and it took me a while to get into it. Um, in fact I think I was reading this for half a month or so but that is not to say that I wasn't enjoying it, I was definitely enjoying it, it's just a slow starter. And I think that's the case with most of Sherry S. Tepper's books I'd guess from what I've read of her previous work, which is just Raising the Stones, which is the sequel to this one, set in the same universe, but you can read them out of order, which is what I've done. I read Raising the Stones first and then Grass, but that's fine. They don't need to be read consecutively. They make perfect sense as they are. And I'm definitely excited to read more from Sherry S. Tepper after reading both of those books, because they were both really good. Now this is set in a world or a couple of worlds because it is in space where we follow people on the planet of grass and grass is so named because the main thing that grows there is grass. It is a planet that is inhabited by a strange sort of nobility where they have inhabited this planet outside of most of the controlled space limits. Um, they're not really governed by any sort of governmental body although there is a group called Sanctity who are the religious order of this universe and are trying to angle in on what grass has for their own reasons. And we follow what is going on on grass a little bit at the start but then more so through the eyes of Marjorie and her family who are forced to go there as ambassadors for Sanctity. So Sanctity, as I said, is this religious order. It's basically um, the one order that has managed to convert the most people in the universe to its way of thinking. It's kind of an offshoot of Christianity in a way. And Sanctity is basically a government slash religion all in one. They have this huge database where they are scanning people's cells in and they have records upon records and workers upon workers who work there people who are given to them at birth or given to them at a certain point in their lives and never get released really. So we follow not only Marjorie and her family down on grass but also we follow Rillaby who is one of the people working for Sanctity kind of against his will as he is there. Um, we also follow some of the Bondam Bells who are part of the nobility on grass but mainly our point of view is focused on Marjorie and her family. She is definitely the main character of this story um, and one that I really enjoyed actually. So like I say we start this story knowing a little bit about Sanctity and knowing a little bit about the planet of grass and then we later find out that there is this secret plague that is spreading throughout the universe and Marjorie and her family need to go to grass in order to see if there is a cure there because Sanctity have little knowledge about grass but they have seen results from grass and they want to find out if there is a cure. So Marjorie and her family go and they have their own internal struggles. Marjorie and her daughter don't really get along. Her son is a bit distant and timid. Her husband is very aggressive and doesn't really know how to connect with her. And he also has a mistress who, just to add insult to everything, has come along for the ride. So the five of them end up going over to grass and they are immediately confronted with an alien society. Something so vastly different from what they've known that they take a while to really adjust and understand not only the lay of the land but also the way that people act, the way that customs go and just generally how to react in certain situations, how to immerse themselves into the politics and get in with the right people to find out what they need to know about whether or not there is a cure. They are doing all of this cure hunting on the sly. The Bonds who live on the planet and the commoners who live on the planet don't know anything about it when they arrive 
but eventually they enlist other people's help and they have to in order to really integrate into the society. So on the planet of grass we have these magical creatures or scientific creatures. I'm not really sure what you'd say, that's why I'm saying it's a bit of a blend of science fiction and fantasy. And they are called hippe or hippe. I'm not really sure, it's kind of like a hippo is what I'm imagining it, but it's definitely not like a hippo from the description, but that's how I imagine it. Um, we also have foxen who are similar to a fox and peepers and other animals like that. They do not have things like horses, so the ambassadors bring horses with them when they go to the planet and this is something completely new to the inhabitants of grass who've never seen horses or really know what to do with them. They are hoping that they can integrate into this society, they come across all these beasts, they meet with the right people, but it turns out there's a lot more than meets the eye when it comes to the customs on grass, and fitting in is going to be a lot harder than just seeing the right people and saying the right things. They actually need to prove themselves by joining the hunt, and the hunt is the central focus of everything on grass. It is completely mad, and it's something that I think you should discover for yourselves, so I won't tell you much about it. But it is just genuinely mad. Um, and the people who do this are crazy. They are putting themselves in danger. They are just, yeah, there's a lot wrong with this, the planet of grass and the way that it's run. But that's something they discover when they get there. So what I liked about this book is that although it's a slow build up, it really has a great payoff in the second half and there are some great lines and extracts that I really enjoyed reading. I think Sherry S. Tepper has a good way with words where she can make you think and make you ponder things that maybe you didn't already. There is quite a lot of doctrine and kind of religious stuff being quoted at you and being kind of forced down your throat a little bit mainly because the main character is feeling like it's being forced down her throat a bit and that is kind of a big part of the story but be aware that it is in there if you're not interested in that or you can't put up with that then it is in there. I do think it is not going to be a story for everyone because it's one of those stories where I could only read it when I was in the mic right mindset to sit down and really think and really enjoy reading and immersing myself in the thoughts of the characters and their ponderings and musings. It's not a very action-packed book until later in the story. It does get more action-packed as time goes on but it definitely doesn't start out very action-packed and I found it quite slow for about 60% and then it started really speeding up and getting really good. So I would say it was a solid read throughout but the second half was a lot stronger for me. By then all the characters were really established and the story had a good point to it and I kind of knew where we were going and I was excited and intrigued to see how it was going to all resolve. And I think she did a really good job of resolving things and making it kind of a standalone but with potential for more in the universe. So. I really enjoyed it and I ended up giving this one a solid 4 out of 5 stars and would thoroughly recommend it. The other book that I want to talk about is called The Immortal Prince by Jennifer Fallon and this book I audiobooked and I'm so glad that I got around to this when I did. I was kind of feeling like I'd been in a little bit of a reading funk and wanted to just sit down and enjoy something and get my teeth back into some really good old fantasy stuff that I know I like and I wanted to try out a new author so I picked this one up and I'm so glad I did because I instantly fell in love with the characters, fell in love with the world and the concept and I am now already devouring book number two in the series. I think there are four or five so I'm, I'm happy there's quite a few to go but yeah really love this series and I definitely think it's one that a lot of you will really enjoy. This is a series where we follow a couple of different people, the main ones in book number one being Arkady who is our young lady. She is married to a duke so she's actually technically a duchess um, and she's a historian. She's someone who wants to research into the history of her race and of the race of the Krazi which is a fantastical race that we get in this world. They are basically half animal half human um, and the main types of Krazi that you see are canine and feline so they're mostly crossed with cats and dogs. So we follow Arkady who is the Duchess. We also follow the immortal prince himself who is called Kael and Kael at the very start of the book has a very strange thing that he is trying to achieve and that is his death which being an immortal is pretty hard to achieve. 
In fact, he has actually had to commit a very horrible dark crime in order to try and get himself beheaded because that is the only way he can think of to basically end this suffering of being immortal. He is a Tide Lord, or at least he's claiming to be a Tide Lord, and that is someone who can wield the magic of the tide, which basically ebbs and flows like a tide over the hundreds of years. So you can have a high tide for hundreds of years, or a low tide for hundreds of years, and at the point where we pick up the story, the Tide Lords are basically fiction. They're a distant memory, something that people kind of quote and people reference but no one really believes in anymore. It's not something that is talked about very much and it's not something that people would actually believe if you claim to be one. So of course KL is looking pretty suspect when he basically says I am immortal, you can't kill me and I'm a Tide Lord. However when we start the story we do see him hung and we see him survive so there is some truth to his story but Arkady is called in to investigate whether or not he has been telling the truth, whether he bribed the hangman, whether he knows more than he is letting on, whether he's a spy. No one really knows about him or where he came from or enough to understand whether or not he's immortal. So it's all a test and Arkady is involved in trying to find out whether or not he is immortal and a prince as he says. So from there we follow their stories as they meet each other whilst he's in the prison. Duchess Arkady ends up going there quite frequently and they develop a kind of rapport where he starts to tell her his story or at least what she thinks of as a story rather than his reality. So what I liked about this is that it is a really fun story. It's a good fantasy book. It's something that you can sink into. It's cosy. It's a nice read and yet it does have dark stuff. Trigger warnings for rape, abuse, genocide, slavery and all sorts of other things. It is not a nice read, it is a cosy read in that you can really fall into the world. It feels very expansive, there is a lot of development done on the races of the world, particularly the Krazi. We get to know them as the story goes on and we get to kind of meet individual Krazi within the race who are doing something or contributing in some way to underhanded efforts. We have lots of political different uh, levels throughout the story. We have the immortals or supposed immortals. We have the dukes and duchess. We have the king who is involved later on and is related to the duke. We have people who are working against the tide laws, people who are worried about their return, secret organisations who are working to bring them down other people who are in hiding. We have so many different things going on at once and there is a lot to enjoy about this world and to just sink into. There is also a gay romance at the centre of the book. Um, it is not necessarily the best portrayal of a gay romance I've ever seen because one of the characters is not that great. But with that being said, I do think it's a great thing to see a world where the men are still very much on top and women are suppressed. Arkady is an exception to the rule. She is someone who's doing things that other people don't do. And therefore, this society is quite based in our own society's past. But there are still people such as Arkady who do not look down on gay relationships, people who are accepting and people who don't really have any issue with it. It's just not considered conventional by the world standards. So I did like the fact that although the relationship itself is not the best, I do think that the author did a really good job of portraying that the society in this is wrong, rather than this is wrong in itself. Um, she also does a great job of talking about some of the other issues, slavery, rape and abuse, throughout the story and via her characters. And I think these things are dark, but they're discussed and handled very well. So I think Arkady herself actually reminded me a little bit of Lady Trent from the Marie Brennan series, this one that's on my shelf here. And I really, really like that series and the way that Lady Trent in that is kind of her own person. And in this, it's the same. She is her own lady, she's going to do her own things, she may make some silly decisions but that's nothing more than anyone would do. It's not because she's a woman, it's just because she has sympathetic tendencies towards these people and she makes a decision based maybe a little bit in haste. I really like the way that she is methodical, she's scientific, she's someone who's going to take a lot of convincing by KL to figure out if he's a Tide Lord or not. And she's someone who can make her own decisions, stand on her own two feet and 
basically isn't a pushover, which I like a lot. So I like her as a character. I also do really like KL. He is someone who has done some terrible things, if you believe his story. However, with that being said, he's actually someone who I think a lot of people would root for because he's kind of a bit of a troublemaker but he's not as bad as some of the others if that makes sense he's done some bad things but he's quite a likeable character and I think that's what makes him charming so I really enjoyed the book and really enjoyed this story to the point of just really wanting to know what was going to happen next and buying the next book instantly because that's what I do so I certainly would recommend this series and I'm definitely enjoying the second one just as much if not more already and hoping to kind of power through the rest of the series very soon thank you to whoever it was who recommended it to me on Twitter and I would love for more of you guys to pick it up because I think it's a massively underrated series that I've not really heard anyone else talk about but if you like fantasy and you like epic fantasy then this is one you need to check out. So I gave it a really solid 4.5 out of 5 stars and I would thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. So those are my reviews for those two books. Do let me know if you've read either of them below and what you think of them or if you have any other recommendations for me along similar lines or by similar authors. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye guys! Thank you for watching my video today Come back and chat with me again